In this class, I would like to discuss about De Moivre's theorem. and its application. De Moivre's theorem is simply for any n cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n is cos n theta plus i sin n theta. This is De Moivre's theorem. Let us see the proof of uh, this in different cases. Suppose n is a positive integer. Case 1. Case 1 is suppose n is a positive integer. Let us prove this by induction on n. We prove the theorem by induction on n. Suppose n equal to 1. If n equal to 1, let us see on the left hand side of this. If n equal to 1, this is cos theta plus i sin n theta power 1. So, which is cos theta plus i sin theta. If you put n equal to 1, this will be cos theta plus i sin theta. I sin n theta. So, for a, suppose n equal to 1, then the theorem is true. Assume The theorem is true for n means that is cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta. This is the assumption for n equal to 1 we have done the theorem is true. Let us assume the theorem holds for n, that means cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n is cos n theta plus i sin n theta. So we prove that it is true for n plus 1. So consider cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n plus 1. It's true for 1. Let us assume for n. We will prove it for n plus 1. So this I can write as cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n into cos theta plus i sin theta because n plus 1 can be written as n into 1 which is equal to by induction hypothesis this will be cos n theta plus i sin n theta into cos theta plus i sin theta. This is by induction hypothesis. That means we have assumed it for. So let us multiply this. You will get cos n theta into cos theta that is cos n theta cos theta cos n theta plus i sin n theta so i into cos n theta sin theta multiply by this i sin n theta cos theta now if you multiply i sin n theta and i sin theta you will get i square which is minus 1 sin n theta sin theta. Look at this. Cos n theta 
minus sin n theta. Cos n theta, cos theta minus sin n theta, sin theta is nothing but cos n plus 1 into theta. The formula cos a, cos b, cos a cos b minus sin a sin b is cos a plus b plus i times. If you take i common, you will get cos n theta sin theta sin n theta cos theta which is sin a plus b. So sin n plus 1 into theta. So the result is true for n plus 1. Hence, by induction, the theorem is true for all n, this is the symbol for all, true for all, this is a symbol, you have to write like this, for all, for all n belongs to n. So it is true for all n. What about for 0? If you take n equal to 0, if you take n equal to 0, cos theta plus i sin theta power 0 is 1 and n equal to 0 on the right hand side, n equal to 0 means, so LHS is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta whole power 0 which is 1 and RHS is equal to put n equal to 0 cos 0 theta plus i sin 0 theta which is equal to cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 so you will get 1 so LHS is equal to RHS so the case n equal to 1 is true hence the theorem is true for all n belongs to positive integers. So case 2. Suppose n is negative. We have proved that it is true, the theorem is true for n equal to 0 and so on. Now let us assume. Suppose n negative, then let letting n is equal to minus m where m is positive. In fact, it is a positive integer. So let us consider uh, cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n. That is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta whole power for n I can substitute m. If it is power n, if it is minus n you can write down this as 1 by cos theta plus i sin theta whole power m. But m is positive remember if m is positive already we have proved in case 1 so the result can be applied this as cos m theta plus i sin m theta by case 1. Now rationalize this. This multiply by cos m theta minus i sin m theta which will become cos square m theta because I am multiplying by cos m theta minus i sin m theta on both sides in the numerator as well as the denominator. So I will get cos square m theta plus sin square m theta which is cos m theta minus i sin m theta by 1 which is equal to. Now what is m? m is now I can write down cos minus m is same as cos m. So cos m theta I can write down minus m theta because cos minus x is same as cos x minus i sin 
for m i can write down minus n theta so this will be now what is minus m n so i can write down this as cos n theta sin of minus theta is minus sin theta so this minus comes out it becomes i times sin n theta look at this cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n is cos n theta plus i sin n theta which is d mauer's theorem for n negative thus the result is or thus the theorem is true for all n belongs to z the set of integers now i'm uh, left over with case 3 suppose n is equal to p by q if n is equal to p by q where p is either positive or negative integer there is no harm for this for p but q must be a positive integer q is a positive integer so what we have to do for this let us consider consider cos theta that is 1 over q plus i sin 1 over q theta whole power q consider this let us see what happens let us see what happens i'm considering cos theta by q plus i sin theta by q which is equal to now q is a positive integer now we have proved just now in case one that de mauer theorem can be applied so this is cos q theta by q plus i sin q theta by q this q comes out as a coefficient so this becomes cos theta plus i sin theta now this implies and now i am taking the the qth root so what i will do is cos theta by q plus i sin theta by q is equal to uh, this is power q so this becomes cos theta plus i sin theta whole power 1 over q or 1 by q Now we are done. Raise to the power of p theta by q plus i sine theta by q whole power p. Take the pth powers now. This becomes cos theta plus i sine theta power p one by power one by q power p. is equal to now this p comes to here so this will be cos p by q theta plus i sin p by q theta why apply de mauer's theorem for this is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta whole power 1 by q into p is p by q now we are done this implies what is p by q it is n so cos n theta plus i sin n theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta par 
P by Q is N. Again, this is a Demos theorem. Look at this, cos theta plus i sin theta whole power n is cos n theta plus i sin n theta. Hence, the theorem is true for all n, for all fractions, for all uh, rational numbers, for all uh, integers. Now, let us see a corollary that means which can be deducted from De Moivre's theorem. It can be deducted from the De Moivre's theorem. Let theta 1, theta 2, theta n be amplitudes. Then I am writing cis, that means cos theta plus i sin theta. So cis theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta n is equal to cis theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta n is equal to cis theta 1 into cis theta 2 into cis theta n. S straight verification. This means cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta n plus i sin theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta n is equal to cos theta 1 plus i sin theta 1 into cos theta 2 plus i sin theta 2 and so on cos theta n plus i sin theta n. That's one uh, corollary from this. It's uh, an easy application. And the second one is cos theta minus i sin theta whole power n is cos n theta plus minus i sin n theta. This is also a very simple application of De Moivre's theorem. Thirdly, cis m theta power n. This n comes, so cis m n theta. See, so, 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 recall what is cis? Cis theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. So, what is uh, cis m theta? Cos m theta plus i sin theta whole power m is cos m n theta plus i sin m n theta. These are all simple applications. Let us see a small uh, problem show that show that cos 5 theta minus sin i sin 5 theta whole power 2 cos 7 theta plus i sin 7 theta whole power 3 whole divided by cos 4 theta minus i sin 4 theta into cos theta plus i sin theta power 5 no it's uh, power 5 is equal to 1 we have to show this show this is equal to 1 a very simple uh, application of uh, de Moivre's theorem and uh, it's uh, a simple application let us see how we can evaluate it it is one thing it is two there must be something, it's 2, 9, this is power 9, this is power minus 3. Let us see this. I simply apply like this. The solution is, I want to take LHS, which is equal to cos 5 theta, I will apply this, this rule, cos 5 theta 
So this becomes cos 10 theta minus i sin 10 theta into cos. I would like to write this by cos 36 theta 9 into 4 minus i sin 36 theta cos 5 theta plus i sin 5 theta. Now I want to bring this down which becomes cos 7 theta plus i sin 7 theta whole cube. This is equal to cos 10 theta minus i sin 10 theta by cos 36 theta minus i sin 36 theta cos 5 theta i sin 5 theta cos 21 theta because 7 into 3 21 theta plus i sin 21 theta right let us see how uh, we can simplify this this is equal to cos 10 theta minus i sin 10 theta by let us apply this cis theta 1 into theta 2 cis theta 1 into theta 2 is cis theta 1 plus theta 2 so i can write down cos 36 theta minus i sin 36 theta into now this becomes cos cos th cis theta 1 into cis theta 2 is theta 1 plus theta 2 so 5 plus 21 this will be 26 theta plus i sin 26 theta Again, the same rule I would like to apply 26, 36. So, this is actually this is not of the form 6 theta minus 2, but I can write down this as minus 36. Remember carefully, I can write down this as now I will convert this cos 10 theta minus i sin 10 theta by. Look at this carefully. This is 26 plus i, 36 minus i. So if I can write down in the form of plus, that will be helpful for me. So cos minus 36 theta, because cos 36 is same as minus 36, minus i times sine. This minus i times, if you go in, if it take inside i becomes this is minus 36 theta multiplied by again this term cis 26 theta is equal to cos again i would like to write this as cos 10 theta is same as cos minus 10 theta cos minus x is same as cos x plus i sine I want to bring this minus inside so it becomes sin minus 10 theta whole by again apply this rule cos theta 1 cis theta 1 and cis theta 2 is cis theta 1 plus theta 2 so I have cis theta 1 into cis theta 2 theta 1 plus theta 2 so I will get cos minus 36 plus 26 look at this minus 36 plus 26 so I will get my cos minus 10 theta plus i sign again minus 10 theta which is 1 that is a simple application of Dimar's theorem yet another application of uh, Dimar's theorem is in this problem if xr is equal to cis pi by 2 power r then show that limit of x1 x2 
xn as n tends to infinity is minus 1. It's very simple. The solution is like this. We have that x1, x2, xn is equal to cis x1 is cis pi by 2, x2 is cis pi by 2 square, xn is cis pi by 2 power n. And uh, let us apply the again the corollary of uh, De Moer's theorem, cis theta 1 into cis theta 2 into cis theta n is cis theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta n. which is equal to cis, take pi common, you will get 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square and so on, 1 by 2 power n. Let us apply the limit now. This implies limit x1, x2, xn as n tends to infinity is equal to limit n tending to infinity cis pi 1 by 2 plus 1 over 2 square plus 1 over 2 m 2 power n as n tends to infinity. This is equal to limit n tending to infinity cis pi into this is in geometric series. So this is a by as n tends to infinity this becomes a by 1 minus r. So you will get pi. And now n is independent of this, so cis, cis pi, cis pi is equal to cos pi plus i sin pi. But cos pi is minus 1, i sin pi, i into sin pi is 0, so this is minus 1. So the limit is minus 1. This is for uh, the two applications of De Moer's theorem. There are many other applications of De Moer's theorem. And in the next class, we will talk about uh, the cube roots of unity, fourth roots of unity, and uh, the roots of complex number.